Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your tarot reading. Um, I'm hoping to get these out early for you guys just so that you can, you know, prepare for the holiday season and to see the energies that you're dealing with. So I'm very excited about this reading. I'm an Aquarius myself. Um, so first of all, um, let me relay the messages or the images that I saw. There are some messages too. Um, they correlate with the images. So let me talk about the two images that came out when I was shuffling the cards. First of all, um, I see this notebook, okay? It's like a, uh, it's like a legal pad. That's what it looks like. It, it flips up over the top and you um, kind of fold it under the bottom and then you start writing on it. And I see a woman's hand like uh, flipping through the pages. Um, so so there are like some blue lines across the page okay and you know the the lines are so that you can write straight and the lines have been stained with water and it smears right and so she's trying to flip through trying to find a clean page but the water seeps from the top of the pages to the bottom of the pages so like it seeps from one page to the next so she's flipping the first page is really uh smeared all the blue lines are smeared so she flips to the next page and it has smear marks as well, a little bit less. And she flip, keeps flipping. So I, I feel like she has to flip like almost 10 pages before she reaches a blank new page without any smudge marks, without any discoloration. And she then rips off all the previous pages that have been um, soiled and she starts writing on the pad. So this image to me what it really screams out literally and figuratively is just a blank new page okay a brand new page and there are three cards in the deck that that pretty much coincides with this image so i feel like this is a really wonderful month for you where you're able to get a lot of closure on things you're able to understand why things happen the way they did so that you can move forward one of the things that really plague air signs is not knowing not knowing the cause for something not knowing the reason behind why something happened and so we tend to dwell on it we tend to you know run through the whole gamut of like different scenarios as and and so that we can explain to ourselves you know um, what exactly happened? How do we make sense of something? But as soon as we're able to get the answers, I feel like it, it's just like that. It, it's like like the snap of a finger. We're able to move on as long as we know, as long as we understand, as long as we can make sense of a situation, then I definitely feel like we can move on. Um, so let me talk about the cards here that indicate to me the new page, okay? So we have the Fool starting on a brand new journey, uh, leaving a lot of baggage, emotional, physical, mental baggage behind so that you can begin anew in the 2020 time frame. We also have as well the Ace of Pentacles, which signifies to me for many of you, this is a new job that's coming into alignment for you. So for those who have been manifesting a new job, a new location and especially um, kind of like a career building type of a job because with the ace of pentacles it's the seed it's the beginning of something that you can you know nurture and water and and watch it grow so i feel like it's not just you know some job like that you pick up just to get by this has a lot of um potential for growth potential for expansion and more than anything potential for stability okay this is like a career track this is something that you feel really stable and you feel like it's going to grow it's going to get bigger and bigger and i do feel that your professional life is really going to be taking off okay we have as well the sun which indicates success getting a lot of positive attention okay so i feel like for many of you if you are starting a new job this is pretty much where you're meant to be the sun energy when you look at it through the uh, realm of astrology okay if you you're looking at it through like an astrological framework it rules the 10th house and the 10th house is your public image how other people see you how they gravitate towards you as well as like the work that you're doing 
Is there meaning to the work that you're doing? Are you finding emotional satisfaction? Do you feel like it's something that you can, you know, identify with? You're proud of the work that you produce. You're proud of coming to work every day. Um, I feel like in this combination with the Ace of Pentacles, which is, you know, a, a very, very stable new job, as well as the Sun, it indicates that you're going to be really excelling at this job because spiritually it's where you're meant to be. You're going to make your mark on the world. You're going to be able to be very visible with the work that you're doing. You might even have like speaking engagement where you're kind of like telling people, a lot of people about exactly what you're doing. And I also feel like advocating for the work. Okay. Advocacy comes in very strongly here. Um, because I, I do sense that you're going to be in the limelight. You're going to talk a lot. You're going to be promoting. You're going to be even advocating for why you're doing the work that you do. Not in the spirit of, of defense, but in the spirit of sharing your knowledge. And, you know, being called upon to talk about. It's almost like you're an expert in your field. Somebody comes in and tells you, hey, can we have a panel discussion? And you talk about what you're doing. I feel like it's in, um, you know, it's along the lines of that, where you're talking about the work and you're talking about it to inspire other people. So I feel like there's a major career jump for many of you. Um, you could get a lot of recognition in the work environment. Uh, people are happy with the products that you're bringing forth into the world. People are seeking you out as, as an expert. And also there's a lot of potential for longevity and growth. It's like, I, I see like, you know, gradual promotions. Okay. It's an environment where you feel like I don't mind doing this for the next five years, for the next 10 years. And I feel that it's, it's greatly like it, it's a great resume boost it's a big jump in your um public image in your professional standing as well as in your income okay so this is really really beautiful thing um stuff like coming in in the month of december it's almost like a christmas present bundled up and you know given to you okay with without you having to lift a finger without you having to do a lot of the, the work because what i feel is You've been working very diligently to get yourself to this professional environment. And so all along the way, the legwork has been, I, I feel like the foundation has been laid. The legwork has been done from your end and you've been working very, very diligently. So this seems to me almost like a spiritual reward, things coming full circle. And you're definitely in a major alignment here to achieve greatness when it comes to your work and your professional standing. Okay, so I see a big career jump. I see a, um, it's almost like, um, I, I, I keep seeing that 10th that, uh, house, okay? Uh, the 10th house, once again, public image, career, work, dreams, aspirations as well. You know, how you see yourself in the public sphere, in the public environment, how you want others to see you professionally. I feel like the light is being, um, you know, shown on this sector of your life and things are really taking off for you, okay? The other card that indicates to me the new beginnings as well, we have the judgment card. This is um, brand new beginnings, contact, turning over a new page, literally, and starting to write your story. Okay, some of you could be writers and you are contemplating heavily about creating your own memoir. Um, and it requires a little bit of like, you know, memory can be very slippery. Okay, especially because, you know, with time and distance, our memory, it, it, it's, um, it's faulty. So I feel like some of you who are in the process of writing your memoir or creating your story or, you know, making even a movie out of it or a comic book or something like that, where you're publishing something very private about yourself and bringing it forth into the world, I do feel like you're going to have to go back and, and kind of like play out the facts and the scenarios in your mind to really try to capture its accuracy. So I do feel like that's going to be a, a challenge, but I also feel like this card, we have the bear and the egg, okay? And I love this deck. The imagery is beautiful, and I love the, the colors associated with it. 
Uh, what it means is, you know, starting from the beginning, um, I do feel like there's a sense of like family and community coming together to recount stories, to tell tales, to kind of like as a collective try to remember what exactly happened. You're getting many different people's point of views in order to understand the totality of a situation. Okay, so this is a really beautiful card, but altogether we have about uh, three cards here that signifies to me major major new beginnings for you so it is the end of the year in December and you know it's a good time for us to make New Year's resolution for us to um, try to figure out you know what we want 2020 to bring for us and try to manifest a lot of the things that we've been craving or we've been wanting for some time and so I feel like you're in a very powerful time period to really, you know, write down, jot down that list of things that you want to achieve in 2020 and things that you want to either improve upon, change about yourself or, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. It's a really powerful time. What we have are two luminaries, okay? We have the star. This is your card. And let me show you what the star card looks like in this deck. It's beautiful. So it looks like it looks like an eagle. It's got um, the face of an eagle and also the, the body of a woman, okay? And these are um, purple flowers. They look like irises. And it's a water bearer, okay? So this is the star and this is wish fulfillment, things coming true for many of you, okay? Recognition as well. So with the sun and the star coming out in the same deck, I feel like not only is your um, professional life like lit up, I also feel like your spiritual and your emotional life are also finally coming into balance, okay? So you're going to have a lot of amazing, I, I want to say peaceful, serene, but also like um, wishes that will be answered, okay? That will be fulfilled for this month, okay? You're in a period of luck. And um, funnily enough, we are transiting through the sign of Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is ruled by the planet Jupiter, which deals with expansion, travel, um, even publication sometimes. And, and also, I, I feel like it's bringing a lot of luck for you guys. So I do feel this is a great time for you to, you know, um, set pen to paper and start manifesting, writing down the things that you wish to achieve and you know working towards those goals okay so we have some major star and planetary alignments that actually will be very helpful for you as you get through this process okay so that's what i'm sensing when it comes to your career and things like that um but i feel like for many of you um you're not really tuning into these readings or especially my reading um, with the, I guess, with the intention of knowing about your your career and, and where things are headed. You might want to, you know, know a little bit about it, but I do feel one of the major draw here is you're still interested in the love aspect and the re uh, relationship aspect for many of you. Um, so I'm sensing that you know for the past few months since I restarted um, you know the the, the readings um, a lot of the relationship readings or a lot of the readings for Aquarius tend to veer towards relationship even though you know I don't do exclusive relationship readings I try to touch on all the points or especially things that come out prominently in the cards and the relationship sector is the one area that keeps popping up month after month okay so I feel like a lot of you are having some, are needing some information, needing some guidance, needing some clarity about your love situation. And I'm seeing it in this spread. Um, first of all, there's another image that I saw for you and it screams out relationship. Okay, so what I see is um, it looks to me like the 1920s, okay? It looks like uh, 1920s, maybe in a European country somewhere, okay? So maybe maybe even London, but it, the, the climate seems a little bit more, a little bit more, like a little warmer. 
So maybe France, maybe even south of France. So I see this woman on a balcony and the balcony um, has like this really expensive drapery. She um, opens up the curtain, goes out into the balcony and she's just, you know, staring at things around her. Okay, it's a second story balcony. It opens up into a courtyard and, you know, there's like a, a beautiful garden and there's this man walking past he's uh he's holding a violin he looks like a performer like a musician or a performer he happens to see this woman and he starts you know serenading her he starts um, playing the violin and he sings along um the, the the words that come out it sounds almost italian i can't make it out okay so he's singing some really passionate love song to this woman on the balcony um, she she looks really really wealthy and she looks really just you know very um, she just looks really extravagant and very wealthy like really clean and, and pretty and just you know um, so he's looking up at her there's like a moon in the background and so I feel like she embodies this energy of the star okay it's something out there shiny twinkling we all want to hold it in the palm of our hands, but it's very far away and it's always a little bit elusive and out of reach. Okay, so this is the image that I was getting when I saw that card, uh, when I saw that image um, of the man serenading this woman. She looks at him, she enjoys the music, but she's not 100% like Im immersed in his song, okay? So I feel like he's really, really trying to serenade this woman to, he feels like very inspired. So he sings to her, he sings about her and I can't make out the words that he's singing. It sounds almost Italian. Um, and, and yet, you know, he's on the, the, the bottom floor. She's on the balcony, uh, one floor up and she has other things on her mind. She's listening to his music, but not like, I guess like she is impressed, but she, I guess she's flattered, but she's not overly immersed in it, okay? So what I do feel is uh, there's definitely somebody in your environment who is trying to get your attention, okay? And the two characters are looking st straight on at each other. We have here the King of Wands. This is a really beautiful, uh, depiction of it. It's someone who's very regal. It's somebody who's very proud. Uh, somebody who, um, you know, it, it's like I almost feel this energy about like um, a predator, not in a bad way, not in a creepy, you know, uh, pouncing on you type of a way. Okay. This is somebody who is, um, who has muscles, who has strength, who has stamina, who can outlast his prey, okay? But the energy with this crown and the way it's depicted is it's somebody who's very, very comfortable and very sure of themselves. They know their capabilities. They know when, it, I feel like, you know, someone who's very good with timing, they know when to pounce, they know when to hold back, they know when to observe. And so I, I feel like it's somebody who has really strong charisma and, um, who has a really good read on other people, who has good situational awareness, and who is highly, highly um, visual, okay? Like visual, like they, they like looking at pretty things. They like looking, I feel like you're very visually uh, stunning to look at to, uh, for based on the way this person sees you. You're very, very stunning to look at. They like looking at you. They're probably very attracted to you because they're looking straight at each other, okay? And I also feel, okay? So coming from different worlds, this is a land animal and this is, you know, um, a hawk, an eagle, somebody that is airy. So this is like your card and the person is looking dead at you, okay? I don't feel a predatory um, stance or vibe from, from this combination. I just feel that you're both heavily, heavily looking at each other. So I feel like there has been some type of contact that has been made. And I almost feel like feelings that has been shown between you and another person. But the way both of these 
um, figures are, are situated, they're both reclining, they're both very laid back. And so I feel like no one is really acting on their instinct or no one is really acting on this passion that's, that's really felt between two people, okay? So you're looking at each other from afar. You could be looking at each other through social media. You could be, you know, wondering about each other, wondering what the other person's up to and things like that. And I also feel there is heavy, like, um, telepathic almost communication between two people where they're very much in sync okay so i feel that for some of you there could be somebody who has um, made their feelings known towards you you have made your feelings known towards them and now it's the waiting game and and i'm seeing here a situation where there might have been some type of miscommunication where you think that the ball's in their court, now they need to act on it, but they also think that the ball's in your court, that you need to act on it. So I feel like there might have been some mismatch when it comes to communication or some miscommunication that needs to be kind of like cleared up, okay? And this is the month where things are gonna get cleared up between you and this person. Um, for others of you, I do feel like I'm hearing uh, the message that I, um, I'm hearing here is, you know, because they're looking at each other, but no words are being exchanged between the two of them. I feel like a compromise. Okay. Somebody is looking for a compromise. Somebody is wanting a compromise or trying to find a way to compromise. It's like, I want this, you want this. How do we meet halfway? And you know, Aquarius, you guys are extremely stubborn. And I mentioned this in every video and I feel like December is the month where the compromise happens okay the, the middle ground and what comes in to indicate that here is we have the two of cups okay and the two of cups is like harmony friendship mutual trust admiration and really um, this is a very strong soulmate connection okay where you can get mad at each other you can hate each other but deep down you really care about each other okay they care about your well-being you care about their well-being and so this is a really strong spiritual connection that um, can't be broken and I usually look at this card and I think of it as reciprocity okay uh, you always want to do right by the other person no matter what and they likewise want to do right by you so even if they're upset they're still gonna call you and express their concern even if you're upset with them, you're, if they had a bad day, you're still going to want to, you know, uh, coax them out of um, their, I guess, like their depression. Okay. So I do feel as well, there's definitely a mutual energy of compromise. Um, for those of you who have been in a situation where there has been like physical distance, emotional distance, blockage in communication, I definitely feel communication is coming in with this full card. This is somebody who, so let, let's look at the depiction of it, okay? It reminds me of the Rider Waite deck because of the way it's, uh, it's drawn, okay? Somebody's about to take a leap of faith. There's a dog here, okay? And he's traveling light. He wants to shed the baggage. I almost feel like somebody is giving up a lot, a lot, a lot in order to be with you. They're shedding the baggage, okay? So what I'm seeing here, this is a king, okay? He's got the crown on. And for him to travel light, be a pauper, and you know, wear like um, normal civilian clothes, I feel like he's had to, you know, purge his lifestyle, his wardrobe, whatever it is. And, you know, for, for cross watchers, whatever gender you are, this can be very well be a she. But what I'm feeling is somebody who's used to a specific certain lifestyle is willing to forgo all of this in order to be with you. And they're taking a major, major, major risk. And because they're taking such a big risk, they want to know whether or not you're going to be around once they take this risk, okay? Um, you know, the, the birds, right? Like the eagles or whatever birds that you have. 
they land and then they take off okay so somebody might be thinking that you're a little bit unpredictable you're a little bit flighty and it leads me to believe that this person might not know you very well okay that's why they think that because you know deep down Aquarius is a fixed sign one of our ancient rulers is Saturn and Saturn deals with structure uh, discipline and it deals with you know the the whole fixity of like being a um, being having Saturn as your ruler and I mentioned this um, maybe like two months ago when you say you're gonna do something and once your heart and your mind is committed to doing it you will get it done and once you tell somebody you're gonna do something you're gonna follow through because you're a fixed sign okay it's like follow through or die trying so I feel almost like you're not worried about whether or not you're going to be there. You know you're going to be there. The other person doesn't know that. And I feel like they might be projecting, you know. I feel like you might not be dealing with another fixed sign. You, They might be projecting onto you. And they might feel like, you know, I can change my mind. What if the Aquarius person changed theirs? So I feel like they're projecting energies or insecurities about themselves onto you, thinking you're not going to be around, thinking that you're going to be here today, gone tomorrow, thinking that, you know, I they, they can like scrap away this way of life or everything that you're they're used to having to be with you. And the scale have tipped. Okay, they've got a lot to lose, okay? And this is the Justice card, by the way. And they're hoping that if I take this leap of faith, will the Aquarius person be there to receive me, like physically receive me? And I feel like they're not sure. They're not sure your commitment level. They're not sure whatever else you have going in your life. They're not sure how their life is going to you know mesh in with your life and all the while you're thinking you I feel like you're waiting on this person and all the while you're feeling two of cups this is an intertwined energy okay it's like no matter what we'll make it work we'll kind of like intertwine our lives intertwine our finances we'll we'll, we'll make do because for you it's like the commitment is there and and what I'm telling you or what you're telling your person is that, you know, I'm here for the long haul. And you need to overcome, you know, your own projections in order to accept what I'm saying at face value. So I feel like with this, you know, eagle eye and this hawk-like energy is very fast, is very swift, and it's very, very deliberate. Whereas with this fool and king of wands energy is that it's very passionate. It, um, it strikes, but then I feel like it burns out. So you, you might be dealing with somebody who is not as fixed in their energy as you are, who is not as decisive, who is not as um, quick to execute a plan, okay? So like they, they might take a lot of time to mull things over before they execute or, or make a decision. So I do sense in this situation, they're kind of weighing things out. And if they're taking too long there might be something coming in in the interim to take their place and I do feel like you might have another situation um, kind of like tipping the scale okay somebody's like the, the scale is being tipped in somebody else's favor because this person might be taking too long okay I mean as much as you know as committed as you are if you're not getting the reciprocity I do feel like, you know, your attention can turn elsewhere if the other person is not reciprocating. Okay, so I, I do feel a situation here where someone has really taken their sweet time. They're waiting. I almost feel like this sense of entitlement coming through, like all the energy is shifting this way. And I, I'm feeling almost like a sense of entitlement. It's like, I'm the king. You should, you know, be at my beck and call. You should come to me with the... Um, what what are those things where um, I the, the word just slipped my mind it's like pay royalties pay dues pay homage to you should come to me 
So I feel like somebody is is doing this, and they're getting very, very impatient. They're getting very antsy, and they're thinking about approaching you, but like they're not really sure how they're going to be received because you're kind of starting to turn away. Okay, do you see this? How her body is turned? It's looking straight at her, but her body is starting to turn. It's almost like I'm done fetching, you know, the water from this reservoir I'm getting up and you know I'm, I'm walking away so I do see a situation here where somebody might have taken too long or taking really their sweet time or you know feeling the sense of entitlement and um, I do sense in general um, Aquarius people don't like it when other people make themselves out to be the middle of attention, like, you know, the center of attention, uh, and they expect everybody else to be at their beck and call, I feel like Aquarius people hate that, that sense of entitlement, that sense of like, um, you know, the world should revolve around me, okay? I, I feel like when you deal with people like that, you purposely don't give them the, the time of day, mainly just to um, spite them, and so you feel like there's uh, somebody here where it's like they they have the sense of false sense of entitlement. And then I'm also sensing a situation where you're very much. I, I feel like this these two cards are very similar. We have here the King of Wands and the Judgment card, wanting to make communication, wanting contact. For some of you, you're dealing with somebody who might be, you know, like um, a big deal in, in their world, okay? So they might, like, be very popular. They might have a lot of friends. They might have, like, um, uh, their professional life. They, they're, they like, um, oh, my gosh, all the words are, all my vocabulary just slipped off out of my mind. So, you know, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with in their world, okay? In their professional life, they might be high up there. In their social circle, they might be somebody that exhibits, you know, that, that has like um, either like a really high social ranking, somebody who manages other people, somebody who a lot of people look up to, somebody with a lot of fame, with a lot of fortune, with, you know, um, I'm seeing somebody who's very well off, who's very wealthy, who is... So what I'm feeling with this King of Wands and this Judgment card is it's somebody who is very well respected, okay? They have a lot to lose. But at the same time, I feel like with this egg, they're very, very vulnerable, okay they once you crack that shell and the the shell is very very fragile once you crack that shell there's that you know slippery uh gooey um yolk and 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 inside of it so i do feel like you're dealing with someone who's um who's not hard to crack who's very vulnerable so they might put on the air that they're very very domineering or overpowering or very very strong and um they take up a lot of space they take up a lot of room they have like you know a big persona maybe a big ego but i do feel that they're very soft inside and they need to be handled with kitty gloves and they might need a lot of ego stroking they might need a lot of reassurance and a lot of um a lot of certainty I feel like they're looking for some type of a certainty from you, some type of an assurance, some type of a promise, some type of a compromise coming in from your end to make them feel at ease, okay? And then the way that you're coming across to this person, we have the star and the sun. Once again, you're getting yourself up there. You're climbing that ladder. It could be a corporate ladder you're doing things in a very um i want to say like laid back manner and you're achieving the same results okay so i feel like they see you with the star and the sun it's somebody who attracts attention 
in a very um, quiet way, okay? Your inner strength, your quiet demeanor, the way you keep to yourself, the way you carry yourself, it's not all pomp and circumstance. It's very quiet, it's very soft, but it's very effective, okay? The strength and the charisma that you have, it's very underrated. And this is the first time the other person has come across somebody like you, because I feel like it's soft, with the star card, you know, the, the light of the star, it twinkles, right? It catches your eyes, it catches your attention. And with the sun, it's very warm, okay? So I definitely feel like um, their world is a little bit cutthroat and hard. Your world is very spiritual and soft and warm. And they don't get that. They, they don't understand how that can be. How can, you know, you climb that corporate ladder without being cutthroat? It's because you have skills, Aquarius. And then they're wondering, how can you achieve so much in such a short amount of time? And it's because you're smart, Aquarius. So I feel like they're very, very um, perplexed by you. They're in sheer admiration of you. And this is the first time where, I keep seeing this, they're thrown off kilter, okay? The tipping scale, the tipping point. They're thrown off kilter. It's a very delicate balance for them to achieve everything in their life. Their emotional um, stability as well as their financial stability. And it, it takes very, very little to like tip things from one side to the next. And I feel like you're that tipping point for them. Um, they can't wrap their head around it. They're very, very perplexed. But I also feel like this person wants to be where you are and bask in the warmth and the, 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 the spiritual life that you've created for yourself. And I feel a lot of it hinges upon you being, you know, being you, doing your own thing, being very, very independent, you know, um, dancing and, 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 um, walking and running to the beat of your own drums okay not having to um not having to bend to the beck and call for anybody okay having your vision and sticking to it and doing things in a very detached but also in a very smart manner I feel like they're emotionally, they could be easily wound up. They're very passionate is what it seems like to me. And they can be very wound up. And I feel like the way you are, and this is something a lot of people complain about, but I feel like it's working to your benefit. Um, you're very detached and sharp and you don't get, you know, you're, you're, you look at things very objectively. So even if you like a person, if they display flaws, you you are in a position where you can call them out on it okay it doesn't diminish the love that you feel for them it just means that you're not looking through uh through at life through like blinders okay so i feel like they're they're just very perplexed and i also feel a situation where you know uh, the way you interact with this person this person is very like at the beginning they could come at you very passionately and you've kept your distance and you're just like, wait a minute, that's a little bit too intense and a little bit too much. And then you kind of detach. And then now they're thinking, you know, maybe the Aquarius doesn't like me. And that's why they're, they're thinking that the ball's in your court to make the next move if you're interested. So they have significantly backed off. And I feel like if you're dealing with a person like this, what it's saying is, Give them the sign, and in a heartbeat, they'll run towards you, okay? In a heartbeat. That's a cool image, in a heartbeat. So that's what I'm sensing here. Um, aside from that, there is another message. Give me one moment, okay? So I feel like for many of you... Um, there might be something very lucrative coming in. So I keep seeing, so when I was looking at this balancing scale, I felt like there might've been a, a, a giant pentacle dropped. It seems like there's a giant pentacle drop down like on this side and it weighs everything down. So what I feel is um, some of you might've just, you know, created a really good life for yourself. So for example, um, just an example, which might apply actually to many of you. 
you've cultivated a life for yourself, you know, a, a social circle, um, like a routine, whatever it is, you're comfortable where you are, okay? And I feel like there is a job beckoning you to move further away. And it's a wonderful new opportunity. And so you're kind of like trying to figure out, should I stay here where I'm really comfortable? And, and I feel like this is not, it's comfortable, but it's not stagnant. So it, it's good to stay in because, you know, you, you, on the one hand, you crave the excitement, but 2020 is the number four year. And the number four year, if you can think of, you know, four legs to a table, it's very, very comfortable. And when a table is, is, is stable, you can pile a ton of stuff on it. It won't fall. It won't tilt over. It won't collapse in on itself. It won't cave in. Right. And so that's what I feel like it's, you spent a lot of time building this very comfortable life. It took a really long time to get there and you're finally there and you're looking to, you know, exhale and look at the, the world that you've created and, you know, just enjoy a little bit of a, um, just enjoy a little bit of like a, a rest and relaxation. And then something amazing, an amazing opportunity comes into the picture. And I feel like for some of you, this could be a job. This can be a partner. And I do see there's a little bit of a distance between you and this job or between you and this partner or between you and this new opportunity. And so it's asking you, you know, do you take the leap of faith or do you stay with the status quo? And, you know, that's to be determined and it's going to be different for all of you. But I definitely feel it's going to be a very transformative month. It's going to be a, a month filled with revelations and communication and closure. Um, closure as in, you know, I wonder what that was all about. And then you finally get the answer and you're just like, okay, now I get that. I, I get what it was all about and I don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, in that way, like that mental closure so that you can stop ruminating. It doesn't mean, you know, closure, shutting doors, letting go. I, I don't feel it's like that. I just feel it's like leaving the emotional baggage behind. When I was looking at the, um, the notepad and, you know, how she's like thumbing through the page, what it seems like to me, you know, those uh, the notepads with the blue line so that you can write on them, right? What it seems like to me is all the water leaking onto the pages and making the line smear so none of the pages are clean it seems to me a little bit like tears okay there was a situation you've uh, spilled tears over you were wondering what if you were wondering what happened you were wondering you know I, I feel like some of you might have been very hurt over everything that transpired and so now you're at a point where you're trying to find a clean page and you have found a clean page and you can rewrite your story or continue writing your story. And so I feel like something is pulling you in this direction, into the future, into the unknown, and into something grand and amazing. And so what we're left with is pretty much um, being torn, caught in the middle, being torn between two things, okay? One is like something very, very passionate um, somebody is in full pursuit of you, Aquarius. You're right in the middle and you're looking dead straight at them. But physically, you're turned towards this situation with the Two of Cups. Okay, so I definitely feel straddling. You're usually very decisive, Aquarius. Okay, but somebody is... Um, Somebody is waiting for you to make a move. They they dr drop the ball in your court, and they're waiting for you to pick up the ball and decide if you know you're gonna play with them. Okay, so that's what I'm getting here. Um, it's gonna be a really amazing month, Aquarius. The last card, actually, there's one last card. I uh, feel the Three of Cups, and the Three of Cups is celebration. Um, coming into a sense of community okay uh sharing like um i'm hearing like breaking bread okay breaking bread with people like sharing sharing <laughs> it's weird i heard sharing nutrients okay so 
you're going to be mingling and just having a really amazing time with a lot of people and I do feel for many of you it's family related which is great because we're heading into the holiday season um, I don't see like things coming back from the past which is great because I feel like you have spent all of November clearing that up so it's no longer in your energy sphere so we're dealing with new things here and we're dealing with like new energies or at least very transformative new energies okay so I'm going to leave it at, at that take care of yourself and for those who are interested in a reading um, please click on, click on the link in the description box below I have a link to a colleague of mine her name is Bridget and she is a phenomenal reader I highly um, recommend that you book a reading with her if you're looking for guidance or if you're looking for you know insights whatever it is okay I will leave it at that. I wish you all a very wonderful Christmas and Happy New Year as we head into 2020. I can't wait and I'll speak to you guys soon. Take care.